Hello and welcome to the Z Hut. Today I would like to show you how you can use a USB mouse from your computer to control two servos through your Arduino board. Now in this tutorial I'm using a Mega and uh, I do recommend Arduino Mega for this project because um, we are using a USB host shield. Now with the library that has to be uploaded <coughs> along with your sketch to the Arduino um, sketch, it's big. And if you use an Uno, you'll have just a tiny bit of space left to put your programming in for what you want it to do. Use a Mega you're going to have plenty of space. So I do recommend a Mega, but you can use an Uno. Um, any of the smaller boards that have less memory, no. You're not going to want to use them. But uh, Uno or Mega, an Uno, it's just going to have to be a small sketch. Like this one here, if you're just controlling just two servos with the USB mouse, you'd be fine. But uh, how I'm setting this up for, I'm gonna, I've got an old RC car that I got um, out of a junk box at a garage sale, and I'm gonna be making a robot out of it. And I was thinking of using the mouse to control it. And using the Mega with the uh, USB host shield to get that in, and then um, use a Bluetooth module to send the info to the robot. That'll all work. Um, I'll have plenty of memory to do that, but um, if I was using it Uno, I would not have enough memory. If I'm only controlling two servos, yes, but the robot I'm looking at building, it's going to have more than the two servos, and it's going to have camera and sensors, all kinds of crap. And um, well, subscribe to my channel. Um, I'm thinking about a month I'll have uh, the first video up on it because it's something I've been working on in my spare time. So if you're interested in that, subscribe, please. But otherwise, let's uh, jump into this tutorial. You can see I have the PC mouse, and this is a USB mouse, and it plugs right in here to the USB host shield, and that plugs in right on top the Arduino Mega. Now, Move it side to side. That servo moves. Move it up and down. That one moves. Now this isn't too hard to do. It's actually pretty simple just to set this part of it up. After, well, it wasn't quite simple when I first started because I had to do a lot of research and... Um, a lot of the info out there didn't tell you a whole lot, but I did some extensive research and then came up with a, uh, a sketch to do this. And I'll show you that in a minute here, but yeah, you can see it works. I also have the buttons. You can push one, it turns it that way. Push that one, it turns them all the way the other way. That one puts them at dead center. Um, unfortunately, the host shield does not support the scroll button. That disappointed me. I was hoping it did because there could be uses for that, but otherwise, well, we'll just have to live with it. But that's how it works. Um, I guess we already went over real quick. Uh, yeah, we're just using a Mega. A uh, USB host shield. Uh, this is a Keys, a K-E-Y-E-S. Um, you can get these lots of places online. Um, actually, if you check out my website, there will be a link in the description below. I'll have a place where you can get these from if um, you don't know where to get them. So with that, I think what we're going to do is we're just going to jump over to the computer and show you the sketch because there's not really the wiring on this. It's going to be a little different depending on your board. 
And if you're watching this, you probably already know a little bit about Arduino, so don't think I'm going to have to show you the wiring. So let's uh, jump over to the computer and just get right to the sketch and show you how you can use that to control these and then do different things with it. And also you can add some other stuff, so see you there in just a second. Okay, well, we're at the computer here. Um, before we start, um, if you want to uh, get this sketch, just go to my website. Um, you look in the description below and you'll find a link. And you just go there and you can get this sketch. Otherwise, um, let's just get right into this and go through it. Now first, um, we're including some libraries and there's a few of them. The uh, USB and it's just multiple libraries. In most of this sketch, there's not a lot you want to change. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Um, this is pretty complicated, but what I'm going to do is go through and just show you the things you can change. And then you can add your own stuff to it, too. But, um, well, of course, this one here you probably recognize because we're using servos and we're including the servo library. And then we're defining two servos here and naming them. And we're just doing S1 for Servo 1, S2 for Servo 2. Then uh, down here, we've got um, four integers we're defining, X, Y, X1, and X1. And um, what these are used for is tracking the movement of the mouse. And... Um, in the uh, the library, the sketch, how it's set up is when you move the mouse, it just plus or minuses one or two, three, how quick you move it. And then when you quit moving the mouse and you start moving again, it's one, two, three. So what we got to do is add and subtract the numbers. And that's how we get the value of where we want the servos to be. And that's what we're using these four integers here for. And uh, in a minute or two here, when we get down to it in the sketch, I'll show you how that works. And all this stuff, leave it alone. Leave it alone. Don't touch it. Yeah, if you change any of this, it won't work. All right. Now, this is the part of the sketch when the mouse is moved. That's how we get the, the values to change the servo position. Now, I also have this set up. If you have it uh, connected to your computer, you can uh, monitor this on your serial monitor. Um, if you wanted to save space, you could just get rid of the serial prints. Just comment them out or delete them all together. Otherwise, what we're doing first is we're doing X equals the X plus and the X movement. So when it moves, it's taking whatever the X was previously and then adding or subtracting because, well, it's adding all together, but if it goes in a negative way, it's adding a negative number. If it's going positive, it's adding a positive number. And that's all there is to that. I mean, that's pretty straightforward and simple. Then what we're doing is we're constraining the value to a negative 2,000 and positive 2,000. Now you're thinking, well, servos don't have a 2,000 and negative 2,000. Well, no, they don't. The reason I have this set up is if you move the mouse like an inch, you'd be at the extreme on both ends of, of um, the 0 to 180, which is what you can write to the servo. So what we're doing is we're going to make it so you move the mouse further so you get more resolution. And what we're doing is we're saving this value to x1. Now I tried doing everything with just two integers, but I found that using four works better for the x and the y, two for each. So what we're doing is we're making x1 now is equal to x, so it's the constraint. It's going to be a value between negative 2,000 and positive 2,000. So what we do next is we're going down and we're mapping that value. 
and um, you're thinking, well, that should be 0 and 180. Well, I don't like to put the servos at their limits. I like to run just a little, little uh, less. That way we're not accidentally stripping the gear out or something. So I have it set for 5 and 175. If you want to put it 0 and 180, go ahead. That's up to you. But this is what we're doing. We're mapping that negative 2,000 to positive 2,000. We're putting it to 5 and 175. And then we're writing servo 1 to that value. And servo 1 is the x. Next, we're doing the same with the y servo, which would be servo 2. And it's the same thing as servo 1. That's real easy. And if you have more servos you added on, just, you know, copy this, paste it, and then just make sure you change, you know, like servo 3 and 4, 5, however many servos you want to add. But just remember with the mouse, you're only going to be able to control 2 with the X and Y, but you could also control 2 or 3 more with the right, left button, and the middle buttons. So there's options, and I don't think you could use two mice with this. I know on your computer you can add multiple USB, but I don't think you can use two mice with uh, the USB host shield. Um, give it a try uh, if you're bored. And if it does work, leave a comment below. I would be really interested if that did work. All right, next we're going to move down. Now, this is if the left button is up. And, uh, of course, normally it is up, but when you click it down, what we're doing is we're setting the X and the Y to 5 and then writing servo 1 and servo 2 to position 5. Now, if you want to have that where you're holding the button down, it does that and let it up and have something else happen, just add that right here. Just add that right up here. Otherwise, here's the right button up, and that's the same as the left button up, but... Then the right button down, here we go, we're writing the X to 175, the Y to 175. And then we're writing the servos to that. And the reason we're doing the X and Y to that is so that the program knows that, you know, if you move the mouse, that's the position that the servo's at. So it's not jumping all over the place. Um, hope that makes sense to you. I really do. I think it should. And we have the middle button, and the middle button, of course, is always up, and like the other other ones I showed you. And then when the middle button is pushed down, and that's the scroll wheel button, it also has where you can push down on it. But uh, the scroll up and down just does not work with the USB hole shield. Uh, I wish they would fix that. That would be nice to be able to use the scroll button. But at the current time, it does not seem to work. I've tried, and researched it it just don't so what we're doing is when the middle button is clicked that's the scroll button it puts both of them at 90 which is the middle position and that's that with that um otherwise now we get down to the void setup and we're starting to serial begin because i have it set up where you can have your serial monitor to monitor the values on your serial monitor and then we're defining which pins that the uh, the servo 1 and servo 2 is attached to. And then when it first starts up, servo 1 is going to be at 90, servo 2 at 90, and that's the middle position. If you want it to start at the 0 position or the 180 position, you just change this right here. That's, that's it. Now this rest of this down here, don't mess with. Um, don't mess with it at all. Like I said, for some of the other stuff up here, don't mess with it unless you really absolutely know what you're doing. Don't mess with it. But uh, that's really all there is to this. I mean, it's not super hard, and there's some stuff on here that might not make sense to you, but leave that stuff alone and just change what I showed you where the parameters are that you can change. And uh, you can add more and then... Add in on your and the void loop. You you could add other things. You know, if you had push buttons and stuff, just add that into the void loop after this, and you're good to go. Um, like I said before, the sketch 
and uh, more information will be available on the website. You'll find a link below in the description. Check that out. I um, also have a link to the Facebook page if you'd like to check us out on Facebook. And uh, we upload videos regularly. I'm trying to do two, three a week, and I'm working on getting five, six a week. So please subscribe because I'm going to be putting more videos up. And hey, if you found this information useful, give me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. Really would. Well, with that, we'll say thank you for joining us here at the Z Hut. Have a great day and have fun building. Hope to see you here again.